So in this video, I'm sharing with you my trail maintenance routine, which consists of three of what I think are probably the most powerful stretches when it comes to staying injury free and balancing out a lot of that tightness that comes with long days on trail or on foot, whether you're hiking, running or climbing, running in particular. <laughs> These three stretches aren't really traditional stretches. They won't take a lot of time out of your day. It's really just three different ways of sitting, things you can implement while you're cooking or relaxing at the end of the day of a long hike or a big run or a climb. So you can do this with me right now. I'm gonna take you through these three moves. Get off the couch, out of your bed, onto the floor, and let's try these out. So if I had to give an award for the position most likely to reduce knee pain, it would be this one. It's the 90-90 or the shin box position where we've got 90 degree angles in the knees. Now this is a regression of the pigeon stretch, which is also a very useful stretch, but most people can't get into it when they're really tight in the hips. So the best place to start moving into this is with the feet actually a lot closer, which is not going to be 90 degrees, but it's going to be more comfortable and it will enable you to hopefully get your hips in the ground. Now, if you feel a little bit of knee pain, that's okay. You should be in maybe discomfort, but not pain. If you feel like it's really painful and it's really sharp kind of stabbing pain in your knees, then you're gonna to wanna to boost your hips. You can roll up your sleeping mat or just use a cushion and you'll find that that becomes much more comfortable. And as you become more comfortable, you can open those knees up. The other thing I like to do is move through this position so I can weight my back uh, hip here and really try and get my butt to the ground and my sitting bones to the ground. Now in this movement, you can move forward as well and that gets you closer to what we would call a pigeon stretch. So I like to just come down and bring my chest towards my thigh in this position, maybe spend 30 seconds here and just play with the movement, keep it fun, keep it enjoyable, and just remember to breathe deeply as you move through these positions. You can also transition through to the other side, and that's a really nice mobility drill in itself, really working the full range of motion of the hips. And remember the key with any stretching is for you to be able to relax and even enjoy the stretching. So make sure that you're breathing deeply, focusing on your breathing when you're sitting in these positions. That's going to enable you to relax. If you're tight and tense, it's probably going to have the opposite effect. So it's up to you to try and find a position where you're comfortable in that you can spend time in. Breathe deeply and let's get some oxygen and some blood and some nutrients into these tight areas of the hips. Okay, our next position is the plantar flexion sit. So we're gonna be sitting with flat feet, doing this barefoot and placing a little bit of load both into the ankles and the knees in this full bend position. Being comfortable in this position, I think is one of the first steps to building strong, healthy knees. What we're doing here is stretching the tibialis anterior, which is the muscle that runs down the front of your shin. It's a very important muscle. It's one that's often neglected. It's entirely responsible for deceleration. So I think going downhill and slowing down our movement when we're heading downhill. So in this position, we're stretching the tibialis anterior. We're lengthening that tissue, getting more blood flow and oxygen in there, helping to create healthy knees. We're also boosting ankle mobility. And we know that range of motion in the ankle is very important for reducing ankle sprains, strains, and rolled ankles. So it's pretty simple, we're just sitting in this position and just like any of these moves, you can do your cooking, you can read a book, you can watch television. It's also a great position to just sit at a coffee table and work from home. The more time you spend in these positions, the healthier your knees and ankles and hips are going to be. If you find it difficult being comfortable in this position, then we use the same technique as earlier, just by boosting the hips with a cushion lifting the hips, that reduces the knee bend, it reduces the pressure in this position in general, and it should be a lot more comfortable. Over time though, you wanna be able to come down to the floor and be able to do a couple of sets of two minutes whilst being pretty comfortable. One of the greatest challenges I think with long distance hiking is simply maintaining healthy joint function over such a long period of time 
of doing this repeated stress activity. And when I look on forums and see comments in my YouTube videos about people that had to quit halfway through long hikes, it's because they had problems with their feet. Now, as hikers, we spend so much time on our feet. It's really demanding on our feet, but we don't really do a lot of training and preparation for the feet. A lot of the time we're thinking about, you know, quads, hamstrings, glutes, these have to be strong areas of the body and we often forget that the feet do a lot of the work and there's a lot of muscles in there. 30% of the muscles in the body are actually below the knee and it doesn't get a lot of attention in regular training. So these are some things that you can start implementing to help build and maintain strong and healthy joints that will keep you going forever. The third and final position in this trail maintenance routine is dorsiflexion. It's very similar to the other one, but there's a key difference. We're gonna be flipping the toes underneath, which means we're gonna be stretching the plantar fascia. Now, if you've ever had plantar fasciitis on trail, then this is the number one thing you want to do, spending more time in this position. Really useful position for stretching the plantar fascia, encouraging more movement and mobility in the bottom of the feet. It's also a great position for building strength, remembering we're under load here of our body, so we're, we are placing load into the bottom of the feet, the plantar fascia, whilst flexing the toes in this position, and that helps us build strong, healthy feet. Again, if you're finding this position too difficult, we can place a cushion underneath the butt, we reduce the bend in the knee and the load on the ankle, and it makes things a little bit easier because we're shifting more of the weight onto the knee and off the ankle. It should be a lot more comfortable. On my last hike of the GR11, I was wearing the New Balance Hero V5. I have a lot of cushion, a lot of foam. They're very comfortable. And I found with that shoe, because it was so supportive and comfortable, that my plantar fascia became weak, it became tight, and this stretch really helped to be able to increase the blood flow to that area and it enabled me to recover and really hold off that injury while I was on my hike and I managed to get through 824 kilometers without really experiencing proper plantar fasciitis, which I was very grateful for. One of the most frustrating things about stretching and why I believe a lot of people don't do it is because there's often no end goal when it comes to stretching. There's no point where you can reach where you can definitively say, yes, I've done this enough now. I can tick the box and move on to something else. Things changed for me when I identified certain standards that I wanted to maintain in each of the main six stretches that I do for my lower body. And I know now that if I can pretty quickly achieve that standard without too much stretching beforehand, then I'm probably doing okay with my stretching and I don't need to have you know, this massive stretching program where I spend hours and hours every week just stretching pointlessly. These stretching standards are a great goal to work towards. They're also a great little measurement tool, something to signal to you that you need to maybe revisit them and that will often come after a long period of hiking. If you wanna check these standards out, I have added them to my newer programs, but I've also added them to something brand new, which is my Patreon page. There'll be more information coming soon on what videos and content I'll be sharing on Patreon. But for now, that's what I'm kicking off with this six stretching standards. So go and check it out if you like. Thanks for supporting the channel. Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you on the summit.